Hey folks, let's talk about the numbers relating to V-carve inlay. Here you can see some non-contrasting woods. I've got a piece here that has a sharp corner. It's got arcs, it's got little circles coming up through. Focus, will you? Uh, it has a nice curve at the end. I drew this random shape up just to show what's possible with a V-carve inlay. Now, I've been doing V-carve inlays with great success for quite a while, and I've always used the numbers that Vectric has given us. They say start with your female being a 0.2 flat depth, your male being a 0.1 start and 0.1 flat. Just divide the flat depth of your female in two, basically. Um, now, having done them for a while, I've had a couple fail, and I noticed that there was a huge gap underneath. Now they say that's for making sure that there's room for glue. Um, when I glue two boards together, I don't want glue room between them. I want them to be tight and seamless. For instance, if I was gluing these two pieces of walnut together, I would not use this rough side and this smooth side to have room for glue. There would be a load of gaps in there. I would rather have the two tight sides together. Now, that being said, I understand that there's possibility for error in the CNC, chip out in wood, all kinds of different things we need to account for. So there should probably be a little bit of room there. So I went ahead, as you can see on these pieces here, I tried some numbers just to see. So they said, start with a 0.2 flat depth on the female. And if you look at all of these, they all are 0.2 flat depth. I just uh, made the exact same path for each piece, just some off cuts I had sitting around. And then I did different for the male version. So this is a 0.15 flat depth with a point, a start depth rather, with a 0.05 flat depth. What does that mean? I don't even know. So after doing these tests, I realized what it means. Our start depth is basically saying that whatever vectors, lines we're using, are going to start so that they made up with the tops of the female portion. So if I start a 0.15 in this case and finish with a flat depth of 0.05, that 0.05 is going to be the gap between here and here. So 0.05 is just under a sixteenth of an inch, and if I squish this in with clamps, I bet we would see that it's close to a sixteenth of an inch. Then I thought, well, maybe we could do a little better. Let's try a start depth of 0.18 and a flat depth of 0 0.02. Look at how tight that gap is. We've got almost nothing in there. And the sides give you a lot more glue surface here. That, I think, is more successful. Now, this, I decided to try a start depth of 0.19 and a flat depth of 0.01. And that's really tight. For instance, if you were using a bandsaw, there wouldn't be a whole lot of room for you to saw off the piece of wood here, the male piece. And there's a chance, because it's really close, that the glue would adhere the two together. And we don't necessarily want that. So, here we have the 0.18 start depth with the male and a 0.02 flat depth. I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and slice it right across here, and I'll be right back. Bear with me. All right, that wasn't too long, was it? So here you can see I've got 
the two different pieces of wood. And if I tip them up, you can see the bits of inlay material. I should have used a contrasting wood to make this more visible. Let's get in nice and close here. Take a look at that. You can hardly find any gap, and that was with a 0.18 and a 0.02 flat depth. So if I'm gluing boards together from this point forward with a V-carve inlay, these are the numbers I'm going to use. On my male piece, I'll have a start depth of 0.18, focus will you, and a flat depth of 0 0.02. Like I said before, the start depth is where the side walls of your male piece, this portion right here, come into contact with the side walls of the female piece at the top of your female piece. I hope that makes some sense and clears a few things up for you. And once again, I'd like to say I am thoroughly convinced that with a machine that has good tolerances, we'll be able to get really good glue-ups on our inlays and a lot less gap underneath.